The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 39 of your Distance Learning Program for Geology Form 4 with Neba Simplice Che. To begin with this lesson, we first of all have to correct the assignment of Lesson 38. And the assignment was, firstly, outline and briefly explain four factors that affect weathering. And the second part of that assignment was to list five importance of weathering to man. To correctly answer these questions, we start by bringing out the factors that affect weathering. And we have nature of rock type, nature of slope, climate, and of course, man's activities. Now, the nature of rock type will affect or will increase the rate of weathering well, uh, by the following, we have composition of parent rock, structures found in the parent rock, the texture of the parent rock, and of course, the color of the rock. Let us see how composition will affect or increase the rate of weathering. Different rocks at the surface of the earth are composed of different minerals. And these different minerals have their different susceptibility to weathering. Therefore, when a rock is composed of less resistant minerals like olivine or calcite, that rock will easily be weathered. Whereas, when a rock is composed of resistant minerals like quartz and zircon, that rock will resist weathering. We go to the next factor, structures. Rocks having structures like bedding planes, fissures, cracks, joints, and fractures provide pathway for weathering agents like water, like ice, to further affect the rock and increase the rate of weathering. Whereas compacted rocks without bedding planes, joints, and fractures will not provide these pathways and will resist or slow the rate of weathering. We have the rock texture, which is the relationship between grain size, grain shape, and grain orientation in a rock. Rocks that are coarse grained will undergo weathering easily because grains, individual grains will be identified and detached. And once a grain is detached, it renders the other grain unstable. Whereas fine grain rocks will resist weathering because it is difficult to identify a grain and to detach it. The next factor is the nature of slope. Rocks that are found on steep slopes, once they are undergoing weathering, the weather products are immediately washed down the slope, further exposing the rocks on, uh, to weather conditions and making them unstable, increasing the rate of weathering. Equally, Rocks that are found on flat topography might be in constant uh, uh, contact with water and this water will increase the rate of reaction between the water and the rock and of course increase the rate of weathering. Climate. We have climatic conditions that regulate or act as catalysts 
to increase the rate of reaction, thereby increasing the rate of weathering. And some of these climatic elements, we have high amount of water from precipitation and equally temperature. Action of man. The action of man like quarry of rocks, mining of minerals, road constructions, construction of houses, airports and seaports facilitate the physical weathering of rocks since we can be breaking down these rocks to use them for construction or breaking them down in order to construct. Industrial activities equally releases acidic substances into uh, rocks which attack rocks and increase chemical weathering. With that, we go now to our lesson. So far, we have looked at denudational agents and features. And this lesson, we are going to be looking at factors that influence erosion. So our lesson 39 is titled, Factors that Influence Erosion. In order to understand this lesson proper, we have to follow or begin with the lesson objectives, prerequisites, real life situation, hypothesis, learning activities, recall, application exercise, and of course, we end with an assignment. To begin, at the end of this lesson, you are supposed to list the agents of erosion and of course explain manifestations of agents of erosion. For prerequisites, you are required to have further knowledge or uh, knowledge on rock and mineral chemistry and of course agents and processes of weathering. Now, we ask ourselves, whether materials are eroded, transported, and finally deposited, deposition of these transported and eroded materials produce features like deltas at the river mouth, beaches on the shorelines, screes at the base of slopes, and sand dunes in deserts. The scientific problem that we ask ourselves is, what could be the driving force behind these processes of erosion, transportation, and deposition? We brought out the following hypothesis. Could the driving force be denudational agents? Could there be weathering agents? Could there be denudational processes? Or could there be weathering processes? We will answer that at the end of our lesson. For learning activities, we are going to be looking at agents of erosion, manifestation of these agents of erosion. And so we begin with the first agents of erosion. Agents of erosion can be grouped into running water, wind, ice or glacier, waves, and of course, gravity. We begin with running water action. Running water action will erode, transport, and deposit materials. And with this, we have to look at the river characteristics and of course, the river processes. So we begin with river characteristics. We will start with river, river channel, river bed and banks, river source and mouth, tributaries and confluence. These are the elements that characterizes a river. So we begin by defining a river and we say, we will say, it is any body of flowing water confined along a channel. Any body of flowing water confined along a channel. Worthy of note is the fact that we could still use streams, 
because streams and rivers differ only in sizes, but all of them are bodies of water confined along a channel. Now, what is a river channel? A river channel is a long, narrow depression eroded by stream, where, or eroded by stream action or river action, where the river stays and flows. So a long, narrow depression eroded by river or stream action where the river stays and flows. Another element is the river bed. And this river bed is the impermeable layer below the water where the river flows. Whereas the river banks are the two sides bordering a river channel, permitting the water to overflow or confining the water along a channel. River source is a place where a river begins to flow or a place where a river takes its rise. It could be from lakes, from springs, from volcanoes or glacier melt. Whereas river mouths are places where the river ends or empties its water content. For example, it could be in the seas, in oceans, in lakes, or in estuaries. Tributaries are small streams that flows into larger ones or larger water body, whereas a confluence is a point or a region where two flowing streams meet. With this, we have looked at river elements or elements of river. Now we go to processes of a river. And the processes are grouped into three. We have erosional processes, transportational processes, and of course, deposition. Let us begin with erosional processes. For erosional processes, we have hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition, and solution. So there are four erosional processes in the river. We begin with hydraulic action. Hydraulic action is the removal or picking up of material from the river bed or river bank by the force of water or by water velocity. When water is flowing with high velocity, it has the tendency to pick up or seize materials from the river bed and the river banks and transport them along. That is why on the diagram we have hydraulic action mostly occurring along the river banks and of course equally it can act occur on the river bed, picking up materials from the banks and the bed. Abrasion is the eroding action of a river with load. This load transported by the river has a tendency to scrub, scratch the bed and banks of a river. And of course, removing materials and transporting. So that is abrasion. And on the diagram, you have abrasion materials at the bottom or at the uh, river bed scrubbing the riverbed and of course further removing materials from the riverbed. For attrition, the materials that are being transported by water have the tendency to hit each other, reduce in size as a result of friction. So abrasion affects the river banks and the riverbed by scratching and removing materials from them, whereas attrition is the materials already being transported, hitting each other and reducing in size as a result of friction. Now for solution, this one affects soluble minerals or elements along the river channel, where water being a solvent, dissolve these soluble elements and transport them in solution. So those are the modes of river erosion or the processes of river erosion, that is hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition, and of course, solution. 
Now we look at river transportation processes. We group them into four. We have traction, sortation, suspension, and solution. They are relative to their grain sizes. The largest grain sizes are transported by traction, followed by uh, sortation, suspension, and of course, solution. Now, let us begin with traction. This is demonstrating traction where large materials or large grain materials are transported by rolling or sliding on the riverbed. So when the materials is rolling, is transported by rolling or sliding on the riverbed, we call that kind of that uh, process of transportation traction. The next we have sortation. When the material is transported by a series of bounces along the river channel, close to the riverbed, we call that kind that process of transportation sortation. Now, when you look at traction and you look at sortation, you realize that they are very much close to the bed of the river. And this type of load, we call them bed load because they are close to the river bed. We have suspension. These are materials that are transported within the river channel. So they are tr transported in suspension. And of course, we have solution, which are materials that are dissolved and transported within the river channel. So you observe now that suspension and solution are all materials transported along the water or within the channel and suspended. That is why we'll give a common name to this kind of load, suspended load. We looked at wave actions, and wave actions are common in marine environments. And wave action equally will undergo processes like erosion, transportation, and deposition of materials by the waggling water, that is sea wave. Let us look at sea waves and their characteristics before we come to wave processes. Sea waves are oscillatory currents of water caused as a result of friction between blowing wind and the water surface. When wind is blowing, there is friction in between the blowing wind and the water surface that generates movement of water in form of oscillatory currents that we now call them sea waves. These sea waves affect the surroundings of seas and produce features that we are going to be defining them. We have the coast, we have coastline, we have shore, we have shoreline, and of course we have beach. Let us begin with coast. A coast is a strip of land where the land meets the sea, while the coastline is the limit to which wave action takes place. The shore, on the other hand, is a strip of land lying between the high and the low water level, whereas the shoreline is the place where the shore and the water meet. The beach is the shore covered by deposit of sand or pebbles. For example, if you move to Kribi, you will observe beach covered by pink sand. If you move to Limbe, you observe beach that is down beach covered by dark sand. Wave erosional processes. Similar to water, wave will erode materials with, through abrasion, which is wearing away of the sides and the beds of the sea by the impact of the load. Hydraulic action, which is direct removal, eh, picking up and removal of materials by the force of the wave. Attrition, which is breaking down of load as a result of heating against each other and friction. And of course, we have solution where soluble minerals are dissolved in sea water. We look at wave transportation processes. Materials are transported, or materials transported by waves 
include sun, shingles, and mud. Of course, we can have pebbles. And there are two modes of transportation. We have the forward movement of waves that we call them swash, and the backward movement of waves that we call them backwash. Those are the two modes by which materials are transported by wave action. The next agent we look at wind action. And wind action is dominant in the desert. And so here we are going to talk of desert characteristics. First of all, to understand desert characteristics. Then we look at wind processes in the desert. We begin with desert characteristics. A desert is an area of land, usually very hot, that consists only of sand, gravel, or rock, with little or no vegetation, no permanent water body, and scarcity of precipitation. We can equally define a desert as an environment where the rate of evaporation exceeds the rate of precipitation. So in the desert, we have the following characteristics, scanty, scanty vegetation, very low, low annual precipitation, and then it is mostly covered by sun, high moisture lost. Those are the characteristics of a desert. Now let us look at wind erosional processes. They are grouped into three. We have deflation, abrasion, and attrition. Deflation is the removal and transportation of particles by wind current. So deflation is similar to hydraulic action in water, but here now deflation is powered by the wind action, the force of the wind, whereas hydraulic is powered by force of water. Abrasion, which is the scraping and wearing away of rock particles by wind-blown sand and particles. Therefore, when the wind is blowing, carrying sand, these sand particles can come across a rock mass and the sand particles now will scrub, scrape and wear away this rock mass and that kind of Erosional process is called abrasion. Attrition, just like in river action, these materials now that are being transported by the wind are hitting against each other, and as a result of friction, they are reducing in sizes. So these are the modes of wind erosion. Three of them, deflation, abrasion, and attrition. We go now to wind transportation processes. They are equally grouped into three. We have surface creep, saltation, and suspension. So you realize here that there is no solution. Now with surface creep, large or coarse grain materials are transported rolling on the surface of desert. As you can observe on the diagram, we have these large materials rolling. And this kind, this mode of transportation in the desert is described as surface script. Surface script. We have materials equally transported through series of bounces. And that mode of transportation by wind is called saltation. And of course, light materials like dust particles that are transported above the surface and we call that mode of transportation suspension because they are transported in suspension. We look at glacier. Glacier action equally will undergo erosional processes, transportation processes, and depositional processes. And these glacial actions are common in temperate environments. So glacier will undergo erosion by three processes. We have freezing and thawing, plucking, and abrasion. Freezing and thawing is when water has a tendency to freeze in between cracks of rocks, expanding these cracks and breaking the rock down, and of course, carrying the rock along. Plucking is the removal and transportation of rocks by glacial action, 
And of course, abrasion is when this glacier transporting materials, these materials have the tendency to scrape the bottom of the bedrock and of course, remove materials and transport. So you can observe all that. We have freezing and thawing, we have plucking, and of course, we have abrasion. Gravity action. What you have noted is the fact that all of these other processes that we have looked at are powered by gravity action. And gravity action is the downslope movement of materials under the influence of gravity. So recall that the factors that influence erosion are running water, wind, ice, sea waves, and gravity. Running water will influence erosion in two ways. We have through erosional processes where we talked of hydraulic action, we talked of abrasion, attrition, and solution. And equally through transportational processes where we talk of traction, saltation, suspension, and solution. Equally, we have wind action that are dominant in the desert and they will undergo, uh, they will influence erosion in two ways by erosional processes where we have deflation, abrasion, and attrition, and equally transportational processes that we have surface creep, suspension, and saltation. We have sea waves that have the same mode of erosion like water, but their mode of transportation, we have the swatch and the backwatch. And of course, we have gravity that uh, will transport materials down slope. Therefore, materials are eroded and transported down slope, aided by the above mentioned agents. With this, we are going to handle some exercises, application exercises, in order to better understand our lesson. Exercise number one. What is the driving force behind the process of erosion, transportation, and deposition? This is our, obje uh, our scientific problem that we have at the beginning of this, our lesson, that what is the driving force behind the processes of erosion, transportation, and deposition? A, we have weathering agents. B, we have denudational agents. C, we have denudational processes. And D, we have weathering processes. And our correct answer is B, denudational agents. Exercise number two, which is the following, or which of the following are processes of river erosion? Which of the following are processes of river erosion? A, solution, hydraulic action, and abrasion. B, suspension, attrition, and abrasion. C, abrasion, attrition, and saltation. And D, traction, solution, and hydraulic action. And our correct answer is A, solution, hydraulic action, and abrasion. Exercise number three. Which of the following is an agent of erosion? One, running water. Two, sea waves. And three, three, two sea waves and glacier. And three, wind. We observe that running water is an agent of erosion. Sea waves are agents, sea waves and glaciers are agents of erosion, and of course, wind are agents of erosion. And so the correct answer is B. Question number four: match the table below correctly. Agent, mode of erosion. A we have water, B we have wind, and C we have glacier. Under modes of erosion, we have freezing and thawing, deflation and solution. And so we can conveniently match water with solution. We can match 
wind with deflation, and of course, glacier with freezing and towing. And our correct answer will be B. With this, we are going to take down this assignment to do at home. First, list the different factors influencing erosion, and two, describe the modes of erosion and transportation by wind action. With this, we have come to an end of our lesson 39 of your distance learning program. And our next lesson will be features produced by wind, water, and wave erosion and deposition. <laughs> Una tege majang matege ndom mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen ngani bana matege mot ngani la kiri watege ndong esetina bia dinki do mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen